Basketbol özel röportajıyla karşınızdayız. Basketbol Şampiyonlar Ligi'nin CEO'su Patrick Komninos bugün konuğumuz ve onunla Avrupa basketbol gündemini konuşacağız. Hem de Basketbol Şampiyonlar Ligi'ndeki 5 Türk temsilcisinin durumuna da değineceğiz. Patrick, welcome. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Um, so how was how was how was this season for for FIBA Basketball Champions League? Well, I mean, I think this is the first, if I can say, normal season after quite some um, turbulent years uh, in the recent past. I think I think COVID uh, really had an impact uh, in the sports industry. Then. Uh, this time last year, of course, we were impacted by the situation uh, in Russia uh, and the Ukraine. So uh, suddenly uh, we have the pleasure of having uh, a proper season uh, where so far, touch wood, uh, we are able to focus only on what is happening on the court. We are uh, in our seventh season, but we are very excited uh, to have reached this stage, uh, this very competitive stage, and, and look forward to the to the coming months. Um, we have five Turkish teams in the Basketball Champions League. Um, we're represented really well over there in recent years. We had Karşıyaka who was in the finals, but this year we still have teams on, on, on the top 16 phase, but uh, let's say not as successful as the recent years. Yeah, I think you, you can have a reading um, on the glass half full, the glass half empty, in the sense that I think this is also indicative of the competitive level uh, of the Basketball Champions League, because we see some, some very strong teams from Turkey uh, that are doing well in the domestic competition, but uh, who are, are not uh, uh, automatically you know, qualifying to every round in, in the Basketball Champions League. And I think this is this is uh, uh, an indication of the competitiveness. I, I think some of the groups uh, uh, that uh, we have seen and some of the games and some of the teams we have seen really highlight the, the, this level of competitiveness. So, yes, uh, we had uh, uh, five teams uh, coming from Turkey. Three of them made it to the top 16, which is a big success. Yeah. So what you could say, what you could say about the competition itself? What's the motivation for teams to, to participate in the Basketball Champions League? I think what we have put in place is a, is a competition, a structure that allows clubs uh, to showcase their abilities, to promote their players, uh, to work closely uh, with our teams on the social media side and, and get the relevant uh, exposure. Uh, we have developed a competition schedule that is complementary to what uh, they have to deliver at the domestic league level uh, and, and find the right balance. Uh, as you know, in our regular season, the teams play every second week, so that also allows them to focus on, uh, on the domestic league because for us, the, the domestic league performance is, is relevant. The domestic leagues, uh, including the Turkish one via the Federation, is a shareholder of the BCL. So it is important for us to have this close collaboration with the league. So for us, uh, we've always felt that the clubs that come uh, and participate in the Basketball Champions League, they do take pleasure uh, in the competition. They are promoted. They are uh, seen uh, around, uh, around Europe and around the world. And they, they are able to uh, elevate themselves and to compete at a very high level. Uh, level. So for us, this is this is always the feedback that we take from the clubs, and uh, we we are uh, blessed to do that. I mean, we we have a lot of Turkish teams that have joined us in recent years, and they've all been uh, uh, very pleased with their experience. And for us, this is the biggest vote of confidence uh, to have teams that uh, enjoy playing in the Basketball Champions League, because at the end, what we organize is a competition by the teams and for the teams. Talking about uh, the structure of BCL and uh, the economy of basketball in, in Europe, also the prize money is a, is a very good motivation for, for teams to participate over there. What's the current situation with, the, with that in, in BCL? I see that there are very good incentives for, for no, the, this is in This BCL is something we, we've always promoted, we've always put forward, because we believe at the end of the day, participation in Europe should have... 
benefits. Uh, they should be benefits in terms of promotion. They should be benefits in terms of activating your fans. But there should also be uh, financial benefits. So we have a structure whereby the winner uh, of the BCL earns uh, at least a million uh, euros. And, and that is always an important motivation, uh, again, always looking at the, at the money as a percentage of the overall budget, it does remain a significant uh, contribution. But Even every the runner-up gets 600, so yes, it's, yes, it's that's really what I was important. Going to say. Yeah. Every, team, every team in the competition uh, earns uh, something. Obviously, uh, it is sport, uh, and the best have to be rewarded uh, with the highest prize. But we believe that uh, we are contributing in what is a complicated I think you, you mentioned the, the economics in basketball. Yeah. It does remain uh, a challenge uh, for all stakeholders uh, to find ways to, to create value uh, in basketball. And, and I believe that we are working closely with our clubs, uh, rewarding them for their success, but also working with them in finding solutions to grow the game even more. From the grassroots of your, of your competition that you support the success because you say that if you're successful in the local, you have to be successful in your local league to be in the uh, Champions League. And you have to be successful in basketball Champions League to earn the highest money possible. No, I, I think there is a logic uh, uh, in what we call the pyramid of sport. Uh, and it starts at the local level, it goes to the regional, it goes to the national, and then it goes to the uh, European and then... Uh, to the continental, if we were to also look at the top of the pyramid, that is the, the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. So for us, there is a logic to have this uh, uh, approach, this growth uh, that uh, um, allows clubs to, to develop, but also as we try to work with our leagues and reward our leagues uh, uh, as shareholders and as partners, we need to put a value to the domestic league results. So finishing fifth is better than finishing seventh. You, you cannot have the same reward if you finish seventh and if you finish fifth. So for us, this is paramount. Uh, and we always look very closely at the league standings, uh, especially month of May when, when they are being finalized to know the composition uh, of our teams. And this is why I think over, over the seven years, we have had now more than 150 different clubs come and participate in the Basketball Champions League qualification round all the way to Final Fours. And, and this, again, is our contribution to the ecosystem of, of basketball. Because as I always say, basketball is, not, basketball is not played by a dozen clubs. It's played by hundreds of clubs around Europe. And we need to create the environment for them to be successful in. Um, also, what I see in recent years is, and it was really interesting for me, Basketball Champions League, as a brand itself, um, it it's separates uh, itself from the FIBA. Now, people talk mm. about BCL, something like, okay, it's, it's under FIBA, but like BCL is a different product. So that, was that something you aim? I mean, it was, it was from the start uh, a separate legal entity, mm -hmm. if we can say, where uh, FIBA and the leagues were joint shareholders of the BCL. Uh, and of course, we do uh, work and operate within the House of Basketball, the offices of FIBA, but as a standalone uh, entity. So as I always like to say, kiddingly, it, it is a startup, but not in my father's garage in <laughs> uh, the building of Microsoft. So uh, we, we do have this uh, opportunity, but especially uh, over the last years when we had uh, a third party investors, a group of American investors join us in the BCL, it is very clear that we are uh, a separate legal entity that uh, respects uh, the values of FIBA, collaborates uh, under the FIBA umbrella, retains FIBA as the majority shareholder, but uh, also has uh, its independent um, identity and uh, uh, growth uh, uh, project. So it's it's so marketing-wise, you were very successful. I could say if you. Mm -hmm. If you could have this different brand, then it would seem like this. So are you, are you happy with the uh, current we, situation of market? We, we, are, we are very pleased with the positioning uh, of the Basketball Champions mm -hmm. League. We acknowledge that this is done in, in a complicated environment, mm -hmm. that is European basketball. 
but uh, uh, we believe that uh, step by step uh, we are helping our clubs, we are supporting our shareholders, we are respecting uh, the FIBA values uh, and uh, uh, with all this in place we are in a position to really build uh, a competition that uh, covers uh, the entire European continent. We always like to say we are a pan-European competition so mm. over the seven seasons we've had 39 different leagues represented in our competition uh, that compose the 150 plus clubs uh, I mentioned. So we are a pan-European competition that respects sporting principles. So as I said again, it is important to look at the results of the domestic leagues and rewards and reward the teams uh, because of these results. And then, of course, we always want to contribute in the discussion about uh, reshaping the ecosystem of European basketball in a way that allows more clubs, more players, more development, which at the end is essential for the growth of sports. Of course, European basketball have different entities in basketball and like with the digitalization of the, of the world, um, it's not, the basketball is not a local sport. So when you look at the product, you have NBA, um, EuroLeague, EuroCup, Basketball Champions League, FIBA Euro Cup, there are a lot of, and I'm not talking about the local products also, but like um, you have a lot of different products. What's the difference of Basketball Champions League than them? And like, how are you competing with the other ones in, in European competition? Well, I think this is a very good question. Um, I think each competition needs to have its own philosophy, its own identity, its own DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, does not mean one is better than the other. One is just different than the other. And, and our DNA, uh, I think, from day one is based on these core values that, that uh, uh, we've, we've discussed, you know, being pan-European, being uh, based on, on sporting merits and sporting principle, and always try to be supportive uh, of our clubs. Um, and for us, this is what, uh, uh, what makes the BCL uh, at least retain uh, its own identity in this, what you rightly described, a, a very fragmented uh, marketplace. But for us, uh, um, as we grow, we're only seven years old, so we're yeah. still making our baby steps. But as we grow, uh, I, I think the identity is becoming very clear. Uh, uh, I think now when, when people... Uh, talk about sporting merit, they know uh, they are talking about the Basketball Champions League. Uh, and we've done recent surveys and, and I think uh, equity, equality, sporting principles uh, are always observed as our core values when you speak to, to basketball fans. And I think that this is, this is important as we try to operate within this, uh, this pyramid of sport, this structure that includes domestic leagues, that includes uh, domestic uh, uh, competitions, uh, national teams uh, uh, that need to also shine and, uh, and support the promotion of the game. You were, uh, as you said, that you're working under the FIBA offices, like uh, your offices at the FIBA offices, uh, but you're a different entity. So how do you see the uh, FIBA, FIBA Europe and EuroLeagues, um, because you, your schedule doesn't clash with FIBA and you know you work under with the with the corporation with the local leagues and everything so you reward the champions of the local leagues and everything but Euroleague is not like that and so what's your perception uh, to that relationship between Euroleague and and FIBA in recent years it seems like they're more close they're closer but of course there are always negotiations as a basketball Professional, what's your perception? Well, I, I think, as, as was stated before, each organization has its own philosophy. Uh, we believe uh, in, in um, respecting the pyramid of sport, uh, rewarding the domestic uh, uh, results, uh, and, and that for us remains a core value. We acknowledge that uh, there is a different organization that has a different philosophy that focuses on the brands and focuses on uh, uh, the, the names uh, of the teams, uh, the stability within that organization, irrespective of what the performance is at the domestic leagues. And as I said before, one is not right, one is not wrong. It, it is different a product, different yeah. philosophy 
uh, each one promoting a different set of values. So we acknowledge this. This is a, a, a fact of life. And uh, we try to cohabitate uh, in this environment, acknowledging, of course, that the more close uh, um, uh, alignment there can be on some key issues, the better it will be for, for the sport of basketball as a whole. Because as I said, basketball is not played by a handful of clubs. Basketball is played by hundreds of clubs. And we need to make sure that all the clubs, all the players, all the national teams are uh, respected, protected, and promoted. Because without the promotion, without the creation of new players, uh, our sport will not, will not grow. And we need this uh, as a European environment. Uh, uh, it's great to have quality American players come and, and uh, contribute uh, to, to our sport. But if we don't continue producing uh, European players, then uh, we will reach a point that uh, th there is going to be a challenge uh, uh, at all levels, national level uh, and national team level. That's very important. I, I have three different questions from what you said immediately. First, you, you mentioned that you go to 39 uh, different countries in in last seven years and uh, you mentioned that we want to promote the product itself by promoting the players leagues and everything so how do you reach uh, you go to those countries you go to those cities how do you reach people with basketball champions league well, I think is it like is it like okay we go there we play the game and then if the team is eliminated, we're out. Is it something like that? Or do you have something special? Well, we, we try to, to impact um, the game uh, in each environment. And again, obviously, having a, a three-game participation versus having a three-season participation I is very different. But uh, we, we have examples in countries like Denmark or like Portugal, where Benfica uh, became the first ever team to qualify and, and play regular season. Uh, basketball, the impact that it had, how this was promoted in the news, how this was um, described and, and accepted uh, in the marketplace. Because at the end of the day, we need the foundation, but then we also have the, the necessary tools uh, through our social media platforms, through collaboration with the clubs, through the media partners that we have in each country to help promote the game. Uh, in our uh, earlier years, uh, we had similar instances uh, with Czech Republic uh, or with Poland, uh, two countries that we, saw, that we saw uh, in the last World Cup in 2019, both Czech Republic and Poland. They, they did very well finishing in the top eight. And, and we see now how basketball in Poland uh, is almost surpassing volleyball as the number two sport, which for many years volleyball was, was at the very peak. Um, I think it is all about working with the local environment. Uh, as I said, the domestic leagues are shareholders of the Basketball Champions League, so they are also inclined and responsible for the development of the game. But we provide the tools, we provide the infrastructure. And, and I mentioned social media because this is an area where we work very closely. Uh, we are the number one club competition in, in Europe on social media in terms of the promotion, the activation, the interaction that uh, we bring forward and that leaves its uh, uh, footprint uh, in every environment that we go to. I see a lot of good things in your social media. Honestly, I'm a big fan of Dick and Lloyd, Dick and Lloyd Smith, the coach Smith, you know, what he produces and it, like it makes easier for, for someone to, who's not watching the competition every game all the time, but it makes easier for someone to understand what's going on and to create the story. So I think they're doing really well on social media. No, this is, this is something, no, first of all, thank you for, for following and thank you for the kind words. Um, from day one, we have invested considerably in, uh, in creating a social media environment where our clubs and our players can, uh, can shine. Um, and uh, we have a dedicated team that spends um, endless hours trying to create this additional content. Because as we always say, a basketball game played on a Tuesday night does not just last two hours. If that is the entirety of that game, then we have not succeeded. This has to produce additional content. It has to produce additional highlights. It has to lead in to the preparation for the following game uh, and uh, uh, inspire viewers to, to watch. 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for participating and uh, to being here. So, hope to see you more in Turkey. Uh, it's my pleasure and I think with five uh, clubs uh, uh, participating uh, at least this year from, uh, from Turkey to the Basketball Champions League, uh, we'll be seeing a lot of each other. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Ismail. Patrick Komninos'la röportajımızı burada noktaladık. Dean Sports'la basketbol yayınları devam edecek. Hoşçakalın.